Welcome to San Salvador, the capital city of El Salvador. And I am doing something that would have been considered impossible just two years ago. I'm outside, I'm on the street. Back then, El Salvador was the murder capital of the world. It was just riddled with gang violence. But all that changed in March of 2022 after a weekend of exceptional violence where 87 innocent random people were killed over the course of one weekend. Then the president, Naib Bukele, made a decree called the State of Exception. And what this did is it took away many basic constitutional rights of all Salvadorians. No longer did you need a warrant for your arrest. It was at the police discretion. If they suspected you were in a gang, if you had a gang tattoo, if you did gang signs, you could be arrested, and you were. You also lost the right to a speedy trial. You lost the right to legal representation, no attorney. And they lowered the age to being tried as an adult to 12. And, well, they had to put these people somewhere, and they built the largest prison in the Latin America. It's called the Center of Confinement of Terrorism. And it's also known as CCOT, and it is not a pleasant place to live. Most, most everyone there is serving a life sentence. You eat the same meal two times every day. Beans, tortillas, and cream. You are mixed in with other gang members. You're 80 people per cell. The MS-13 are with the Barrio 18 gangs. It is not a pleasant experience and it is the rest of your life. So, two years ago, murder capital of the world. Today, second lowest murder rate in all of the Americas behind only Canada. And today we're gonna put that to the test. I am in the historic center. This was a strict no-go area two years ago. Absolutely no reason for a tourist to come here. It was, it, was, uh, it was suicide. But here I am today. I must say, I'm looking around, I feel safe. I am the only, uh, as far as you know, I can tell, foreign tourist here. But we're gonna walk around. We're gonna check things out and we're gonna put this, uh, we're gonna put this to the test. We're gonna see if El Salvador really is safe for tourists now. Behind me, the National Palace. Over here, we have the National Cathedral. Behind that is the National Theater. And this is the center. This is what you wanna see if you're here as a tourist. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spiral out. Let's just keep going and uh, we'll keep going until either I get killed or, or I'm convinced that it's safe. So right now it seems like a very typical Latin American square. There is a police presence, and I'm gonna, I, I'm assuming since Salvadorians don't have any constitutional rights, neither do I, so I'm gonna avoid pointing the camera at them. I don't wanna draw any unnecessary attention to myself. And here we have this great library, huge library right here in the town center. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep going. The streets are closed off the traffic. There's uh, performers, there's people just chilling, there's people staring, but let's just continue on and go out into the neighborhood. Now, along with these changes, there has come not just safety, there's also economic boom. And the, uh, the country of El Salvador is once again getting foreign investors. Um, there's renovations happening all over the city, everywhere you go. It's uh, actually a very pleasant city from what I've seen so far. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend, very inexpensive. Today I took a Uber up to the Vulcan Bocaran, which we might get a glimpse of. And it was about a 30 minute Uber ride and it was $6. It's very, very inexpensive. An entree in most restaurants, you're at five, $6 very economical and right here we have this nice little park where a lot of families are gathering so let's go check it out now I have spoke to a few El Salvadorians since I've been here and they've expressed just overwhelming joy they weren't even they didn't even feel safe on their own streets they were just 
the victims of this gang violence for decades. And there's this sense of relief that you can hear when they talk about it. And they're so excited because their country now has a future, a, a future that they you know, can see it's happening. It's happening so rapidly. You can see it just happening before your eyes. But let's continue on. Here we have a market, and that looks interesting. So let's uh, go take a look in there. I'm assuming it's gonna be a typical Latin American market with all types of goods. And uh, definitely in a more rundown area now that we left this main plaza, which let's go check it out. Pardon. Victoria. And it's like a maze in here. So here we have a hardware section. Hola. Bras, soccer jerseys. And while we're at it, let's let's go Colombia. Spider-Man backpacks. And it's kind of closing up right now. But let's just keep going. See what we see. Hola. Oh, this looks like a very nice corridor here. I'm gonna head down that way, this way. We go deeper and deeper into the market. Hola, amigo. Everybody here seems very, very friendly. And uh, actually smells kind of good in here. A lot of bras, a lot of clothes, ropas, and uh, yeah, it's kind of quiet, winding down the day. All right, let's go back out onto the street and the sun is bright, bright and disorientating. And uh, yeah, still, I'd say I'm the only tourist here. And I think it's just because the word hasn't gotten out yet. This is all new. This is two years in the making. And, uh, yeah, I predict El Salvador will probably be a premier destination. It has so much to offer as far as geography. The surfing is incredible. The people are wonderful. The food is delicious. And it's very inexpensive now. Hola. If I were to invest in a foreign country right now, it would be El Salvador. The President Nayib Bukele, in another controversial move, uh, first country, only country, to adopt Bitcoin as a national currency. That was done in 2021, I believe. And in development is a massive city of the future called Bitcoin City. And Bitcoin City is going to be powered by geothermal power and that power is going to be used to mine Bitcoin. And so far, it's really paid off well. And uh, Bukele is pretty much a national hero at this point. It is, I, I just can't overstate the changes that have occurred, occurred here in this country. And here we have another church. It's a beautiful one right here. The camera is overheating, but we looped around the one market. Now we're at some crazy intersection. Traffic is terrible in this country. It's one of those where you do your best to cross the street and not get killed. Well, let's go. Let's continue. Okay, we have the central market over here. But here we have a, an outdoor market. It looks fantastically entertaining. Um, hard to tell what direction to go. Hola. Let's go down. Let's go down this corridor where they seem to be just selling a ton of different clothes. We have jeans. We have shirts. We have sweatpants. And we'll just continue. Lots of shirts for sale over here. And just beautiful people. Hola. Look at all these shirts, all types of clothes. And uh, yeah, just a long, endless corridor 
of Europa is being sold. Let's go. And everyone's just saying hello and super friendly. I'm sh sure this is uh, uh, as new as this is to me. Walking these streets it has to be new to see a foreigner walking through this market. So let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> But here we go deeper and deeper into what seems like a never ending market. I wonder where this thing's gonna pop out at. Oh, we have a big store in here. Oh, now we're starting to get into handbags and backpacks. Over here, so many sandals to choose from. Let's continue. Welcome, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Your country is beautiful. Children's clothes. Pantaloons. I'm good. How are you today? <laughs> Everyone is just super, super nice. We have more shirts. We have young kids in school uniforms. It's Friday, so everyone's probably getting ready for a, a fun weekend. Reached an opening, and there is cars coming, but you can see all the way down this way. Everyone's selling stuff down this corridor, down this corridor, and this is the way further from the plaza where we started. So let's uh, let's keep going. It all seems like uh, just a very, very normal life to me, and uh, very interesting. I don't. Feel remotely threatened. Um, hard to believe. Hard to believe this was the murder capital of the world only two years ago. If you ever need a barber chair, right here. That's where you get it. Hey, Pero, you don't like me, do you? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Funny little dog. This little alleyway down here looks absolutely crazy if you can see. Just a sea of people as far as you as far as you can go. Alright. This this looks interesting to me. We have a baby sitting in the cabbage. Now, this is my third trip to El Salvador. The previous two, I came to surf, and that was before the state of a uh, exception. And at that time, it was San Salvador was a very, very strict no-go. You would land at the airport, and you were taken directly to the beach to the surf break. Excuse me, lady with the giant carrots. You're taken directly to the surf break from the airport and it was justified or you're told to feel comfortable because they're apparently the cartels, the gangs, knew the importance of tourism, especially to the government, and there was an unwritten, unspoken rule that do not mess with... My camera keeps overheating. And, uh, I'd like to continue this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the camera cool off a bit, charge it up, and I'm gonna let the sun go down. And, uh, Let's uh, really put this to the test and see how these streets are in the nighttime. I'll see you then. Okay, well, the sun is down, and um, to be honest, it actually feels safer. There's more people. I mean, this place is packed. There's live music, more street performers, it's couples, it's families, there's kids running around. Um, I went into a nice crowded restaurant, had a great meal, went into this pool hall in this old colonial mansion. That was super cool. And um, yeah, I'm convinced. San Salvador is safe. El Salvador is safe. This place is awesome. Highly recommend it. I'm, as far as I can tell, the only tourist here. And 
100% certain that's going to change in the next couple years. I recommend seeing it while you can. But um, I'm out of here. Ciao.